With the road course dramas complete, it is time to enter the start of the final act on what has been one of the most dramatic seasons in classic IndyCar Series history. Today, the drivers put all their cards out on the table and get ready to gamble. Welcome to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Hello everyone and welcome to the penultimate round in the Classic IndyCar Series 2020 season. My name is Nolan Rempel. Beside me today is going to be Daniel Harris with Hugo Luis downstairs in the producer's chair for today's action. Daniel, I know you have him with us for this season, but I cannot stress enough what a dramatic season this has been. To briefly sum it up so far, Robert Grosher is within striking distance of points leader Lucas Laville, just 34 points behind. Joshua Chin, having thought to be out after missing several races, has managed to bounce back with a dominant win at Watkins Glen, putting himself just 62 points off of LaVille. The big story, though, is the points leader coming into today's race, as he's going to be starting from the tail of the field, meaning his championship run could very well be in jeopardy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a close leaderboard by the standings. I am, uh, it's great to be here. I'm very interested to see how this race goes. I should mention, of course, that uh, due to special rules within the CIS, LaVille has to serve an 11-point penalty today, meaning that if he wins, he'd only get 39 points instead of 50. For Grosher, though, it's even worse, having to serve a 20-point penalty all the way back from Phoenix. So if Joshua Chin wants to have a run at the title, now would be his time to shine. Yeah, a, lot of lo a lot at stake in this race, especially with that uh, next race being that finale next month, sorry, at Indianapolis. Of course, we're getting set to go racing. One. Indeed it will. We're set to go racing for 208 laps here at Las Vegas today on October the 11th. And it'll be November 8th at Indianapolis Motor Speedway when we go racing for the double points season finale. So just two races left to go and definitely two wild card tracks at that. Well, speaking of putting the cards on the table, I know that these guys over the CS, they have got themselves a little bit of a track guide to show you that maybe going around this speedway might not be as easy as it looks. Welcome to Las Vegas for the penultimate round of the 2020 season. I am Josh Baird, and I will be giving you a trip around this fast track. Entering turn one, we will be reaching speeds of nearly 215 miles per hour in clean air. This track will be full throttle around the entire track, making for some action-packed racing. Going down the backstretch, we will be on the low line or the high line depending on the weather. A defender may use their position on the low line to prevent an overtake. Flying through turns 3 and 4 are also full throttle, making passing a strategy, and expect to see many cars side by side throughout the race. This has been a track tour brought to you by Virtual Race Car Engineer Classic IndyCar Series. I hope you enjoy the race. And that was your lap guide of Las Vegas Motor Speedway, driven by Joshua Baird in the number 23 machine. Currently Baird sitting 15th in the qualifying order. Just two minutes left in qualifying here. Joshua Chin, a driver who has been known to be uh, very, very good on the ovals, is right now sitting top of the board with the 25-194. So some very, very fast laps around this 1.5-mile speedway here, Daniel. Yeah, some really, really quick laps. So it's definitely going to be tight, especially with that pack racing of ovals to see who comes out on top in the end. Seems that uh, no one's having a bit of technical lift. difficulties there. So starting grid, we've got Joshua Chin, Paul Andrew Aitken in the number 27, in second qualified, 0 
the gap between those two, followed by Niall McBride in three. Third position, fourth taken by Robert Grosser. Andrew Wood in the from New England, number 32, taking out fifth. Caleb Weekly taking sixth in the number 10 from Illinois. Logan Simmons in the 75 from the Mid-South, number P7. Number nine, David Lodel. Number 10, Joan Jainen from Finland. Ethan Agan from Texas. Jamie Wilson in 12th from the UK. Andrew Adair Saunders from 13th. Adam Shipstone, 14th. Josh Baird from the Midwest, number 23 in the 15th. Got the 96 cards. Vesa, Jilla Olilla, Tristan Hauser, the 17th, Mike Gerlisa in 18th, Hans Pitkanen, 19th, and Todd Novasad in the 20. Andrea Giash, 21, John Johnny Garrett, 22, Max Davies, 23, Stefan Rossman in the 24. And Art McQuinn rounding out the grid, 25th. So 25 cars getting set to rumble here uh, in Las Vegas Motor Speedway down in Nevada. It is set to be a thrilling race. 208 laps is going to be the distance or two hours, whichever comes first. An estimated fuel window of about 54 uh, laps as well. So it is looking to be a very, very thrilling race uh, here today, Daniel. Yeah, definitely, especially with those uh, leaderboard leaders, uh, the sorry, standings leaders uh, starting from the rear and some from the pit lane. Definitely, uh, definitely going to be a, a, a race to see how they manage the, to get through that field. And we have to keep one eye on Lucas LaVille throughout the entirety of this race as well. Just because he has to start at the tail of the field, he has got his work really, really cut out for him today if he is going to have any hopes at hanging on to his championship lead uh, after today's race. Yeah, definitely. Especially as he's starting from that rear of the grid, as I said before. It's definitely going to definitely gonna have to keep an eye on him. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> Got to get through that field. And it's uh, not an easy thing to do at a track like this. Of course, draft is going to be very, very key. So these drivers are going to make sure that they need to stay close, but uh, not too close because if they get just a bit too close, well, we could see ourselves a couple of very, very big messes today. So Joshua Chin already leading the field off through turn number two. He's got Andrew Aik beside him. Nam McBride round out the top three. So one of your championship contenders who we had thought was out looking to perform good and maybe go back to back yeah definitely it would be uh be great for him to go back to back but yes as you said before one touch a little bit too close and the big one happens and that 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 especially with lucas starting at the back it's definitely gonna hinder him if those leaders crash or the mid pack crashes rex out he's got to maneuver himself through that with with minimal damage, or no damage if he can, if he's got any chance of, of getting anywhere close to the points. The pace car is off. Joshua Chin leads them to the green flag. We're racing here in Las Vegas, Nevada for 208 laps. The penultimate round of the Classic Car Series is underway already. Single filing out all the way back to about ninth place. The top 10 now single filed out. So far, so clean down into turn number two. Yeah, you can see that all the way to the back there, those leaders are really starting to get away. They're going to have to work together from about third position back to catch those leaders if they don't want them to get away. Indeed, so they're going to be trying to work hard to make sure that they stay clean for these opening stages. Maybe see if we can get some green fly pit stops in here. Right now, taking a look at Caleb Weekly driving in the sixth position in that number 10 car. Still single filed out for a good portion of the field. The first side-by-side -side battle really behind him for the ninth position at the 10th position. Ethan Hagen just now getting by Dave Lodel. Uh, Dave having to back out around the outside. He's going to get back in line now. 
So far, a very, very clean start to this race. Uh, running single file for a good portion of this field. I think that was Ethan Egan that just made a little bit of a lookout uh, to the top side, but he is going to keep it steady for now. Now going to jump down as Yoni Kainen manages to stick it to the bottom and try and fend him off uh, as he tries the top line once again. And that might work in stock cars. Not going to work too well here, though, in these Lara IRO5 Indy cars. Yeah, they definitely got to stick together, but he's gonna, gonna have to go as we're on board right now. Is having a look just how close they are behind each other. Right on the board, we're down with Yoni Kainen running in the ninth position in that number 77 machine. Kainen is one of the faster drivers uh, all season. He's right now got Ethan Egan on his outside, which is no doubt not helping the nerves of the 77 car because. Even if you have one car that's just to land up, it's still nerve-wracking to have those cars up there because it's so easy for them to turn down just a little bit. And unlike in stock cars, like you mentioned, Daniel, you cannot save these cars easily. As soon as you touch wheels, you are going to be sending one another into the outside wall. So far, Joshua Chin up front still leading. He's led every lap so far this race, and right now it looks like everybody is just content with following in line. Yeah, like, it, as soon as one of the, if one person makes a mistake, it ends up in a whole field wreck, and getting through one of these wrecks is not easy at all. Yeah, as you can see now, he's right on that rear wheel. He comes down a little bit too much, and it's all over for the both of them. That is right now, uh... Niall McBride, that is in a bid to try to get himself up into the second position. Position round the outside of Andrew Aiken. Aiken doing a good job though, fanning them off, really sticking it uh, to the bottom side of the racetrack. And so far, McBride uh, doing a very good job to keep it out of him. A couple cars fanning out behind as well, but keeping things up front because look at the Hornets nest of cars that is running out in this field. It does make you wonder though, when are we going to see three wide? It's certainly doable in cars like these. Caleb Weekly is muscled out of line. Yeah, it looked like they nearly went three wide there, about. Uh, position 5-6 they nearly went 3 wide across the stop finish line they're 2 wide around there close one and weekly still dropping back spots he's got uh, right now Martin June uh, just on his inside right now you also have Andrew Wood right now that's on the top side of the racetrack as well that'll actually give out a hand to Caleb Weekly. it'll give him a little bit of draft but Martin June, or sorry Andrew Wood just completely abandons him on the outside line as well nothing Weekly can do Weekly's trying to pull the outside line by just a little bit but it really is not working out too well for him. Jamie Wilson uh, is on the outside line right now as well, so a couple drivers might be trying to open up a second groove on the racetrack. So far, everybody has remained clean. There hasn't been any really major issues. There are some cars that are fading uh, in the back of the field, but that is uh, to be expected when you get cars that are starting to lose the draft, so it really is just a big hornet's nest from first place all the way back to about 12th, really. Yeah, but I mean, there's still two, about 200 la 192, 98, sorry, laps to go, so I mean, there's, there's not really any reason for them to go too wide at the moment, but I guess you could see them trying it out, trying to get some positions back on the leaders, because they are seeming to form a, two packs here, with the leaders sort of leaving those, those back cars, and we, we know that that back car, that backpack contains Lucas Laville, and if he's got any chance of even his championship hopes alive, he's going to get up to this front pack. Now, the vote right now uh, is still running deep in the field uh, in the bottom five cars on the racetrack right now. So, Lavilla right now is in a critical position right now for his championship because as it stands right now, he is going to be losing the championship league right on board with him now. Uh, he is going to be losing this championship league if things continue to go as they are. Uh, so this is definitely bad for him right now. He's sitting in 24th place right now, uh, trying to line up Stefan Rosman to go for a pass. Rosman on the apron, bobbling the car, manages to recover it. But that also shows the dangers that we haven't talked about so far is that apron. Even on the tri-oval, you do not want to get on that white line because it is going to hit some of the car, and I'll send you shooting up into the wall in a heartbeat if you can't catch it quick. Yeah, that, that apron is so dangerous. You touch one that front left wheel down onto that apron and it is nearly all over it could end in an instant just one little overcorrection, and you're straight into the wall 
And Rossman really tempting fate there, it would seem, as he's going down to the to the line there. We'll have to keep an eye on that, see how that's going to play out. Lucas Laville actually trying to pull around the outside of him. He actually might get him here off of turn number four if he could get the run and manage to secure 23rd place. He's up into 23rd right now, but it's definitely not secure. He still has Rossman uh, on the inside line there. They are still, for the most part, single file up in the front grouping as well, which I guess then begs another problem. That's for the drivers at the front of all of these uh, little individual packs here. But we were talking about how the fuel run is looking to be about 54 laps in clean air. These guys that are drafting, though, they can easily conserve quite a bit of fuel uh, as well, which is dangerous for Joshua Chin because he can find himself maybe even a couple laps off cycle here if he can't find a way to save some fuel because right now he's having to keep that foot pinned to the floor in order to keep these other drivers behind him. Yeah, it's definitely going to be hard for him to, to work something out. Can't really go to a high line and drop back because you lift that foot off for too long and somebody's going to rear-end you. I and it looks like we actually we actually might have had a little bit of contact in the back. Martin Juna was going three wide with Jamie Wilson and Kayla Weekly got really unsettled and had to back out to about from about 200 miles an hour to about uh, uh, sorry from about 215 miles an hour or 20 even uh, down to about 199. So uh, Martin June definitely had a bit of a struggle there last time by into turn number one. A very, very unsettling feeling when your car gets that loose because he had to back it up or he would have been into the wall, meaning most likely he would have flipped it over. But look at this. He's already trying to make his way back up the gate uh, through the order. He's trying to make a move on Caleb Weekly. Yeah, going three wide this early into the race. Not too sure about the smarts of that move, but uh, hey, do what you can to win, especially that far back. I have got much to lose. At the end of the day, you do what you got to do, right? Yeah, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do to take that, that chicken dinner home. Let's take a look further up front right now. Jamie Wilson and Caleb Weekly uh, right now in the midst of a battle. This is for the uh, first position within the top 10. Ethan Agen is trying to make a move on Yoni Kaiten and just up the road in front of them in that uh, bright pink livery as well. Ethan Agen doing a good job. He's going to look to the outside now. And can he get around Yoni Kainen? And he can. So looks like Ethan Agen going to make up a move there on uh, the number 77 machine. Could he make another one potentially on Andrew Wood? Yeah, they're looking to try and make that uh, that that too wide uh, field go. And it looks like if they get a bit further up, it really could work. I think some drivers will end up going a bit higher, trying to get some more positions. And this could end up quite messy or very, very exhilarating. And chances are it is going to be the latter one because it's... This is a race that we expected was going to be exciting, and it certainly has been so far. I mean, look at the cars now starting to fan out over the racetrack. Everybody's trying to find different lines. Everybody's trying to find their way to the front because at the end of the day, you also cannot sit behind this massive train forever. None of these drivers are going to be wanting to give Joshua Chin an easy victory. Right now, though, this is exactly what Joshua Chin wants to see is all these cars in his rearview mirror because he's in prime position right now to sweep in and take the championship lead. If not, he's going to take second place in the points for sure right now. Uh, quite possibly could even secure the points lead, not in this race, but certainly uh, at Indianapolis if he can get it done here. So Chin right now needing a good result here. Certainly doing a good job so far. A little bit of a checkup, though, further in the back of the field. A couple drivers got a bit close for comfort. Yeah, that's not going to help them, especially you can see them, don't know if they're catching the field or not, but they need to be flat out to the floor to catch this this pack, otherwise that this pack is just going to run away from them. There's going to be no hope for Lucas Lavelle to get back up to this front pack. It's still about a 13-car train right now in this lead grouping, then the field kind of splits off to about 5, 3, uh, another five car group and then low Marshall Standard just running all in his lonesome. So this is definitely the biggest group uh, on the track as of right now. Let's take a ride on board uh, with Robert Gross right now. He's currently running second place in the points. He's in prime position uh, to steal the points lead away from Lucas Laville uh, right now as well. Well, you'd think that at least, but then you factor in the points penalties. Gross has got a 20 point penalty. He has to serve at the end of this race, whereas Laville has got an 11 point penalty. 
Ethan Hagen trying to make a move on Niall McBride on the outside. McBride came up though, looks like scared Hagen out of that move, but Hagen has got a decent run on him. I mean, look at that car go around the outside there. You can sometimes get some momentum here off the outside line of the corners, much like you can at tracks like Daytona and Talladega uh, in the stock cars. He might be using that to the same advantage here. I mean, he, he was in, he's got him from that third position, never mind fourth. He's really going against uh, Niall McBride. Really going for it. He's looking to try and get back into that bottom line. Niall is having none of it. Niall McBride putting himself right where Ethan Aiken looked like he was wanting to go. I don't know here. We might see a pass for the lead. Andrew Aiken looks to the outside line. He's trying to make a move around Joshua Chin. Aiken is done waiting, it would seem. This is not what Joshua Chin wants to see, or is it? Because remember, Joshua Chin has been breaking the air for these drivers. He's been using a lot more fuel. This can actually help Joshua Chin to save some fuel for the longer run. Ake has got to make sure this pass gets through cleanly, though, because if Joshua Chin DNFs here, it could very well spend, spell the end for his championship run. But look at this. Here goes Ethan Aiken. We are three wide for the race lead. Three wide for the race lead. As you can see, that second uh, second line really starting to form up now as they're going to end up going side by side for what will probably be a couple laps before we get a, a, a mess. But if Joshua Chin uh, DNFs here, then that'll probably spell the end of this pack, probably bring out the safety car. But that'll be a blessing in disguise for Lucas Lavelle, especially at the back of that pack still. Look at how close those three cars are running on the top side. That's Ethan Agan, Logan Simmons, and Jamie Wilson. They're running a line astern right now, almost trying to bump draft the cars. <laughs> Not something you see all throughout in Indy cars. Uh, well, we're, uh, well, before this all kicks off, we should mention as well that there is live timing available for this race at racebot.tv forward slash CIS. Uh, that's racebot.tv forward slash CIS if you want to keep up with your favorite drivers on the circuit. Oh, trouble! He oh. crashed back now. Three cars upside down. That's way over. Wilson's flying. Martin Jude's upside down. Jamie Wilson's still flipping over the wall, over the fence, into the infield. He goes and sits, comes to rest by the He's on top of the fence. How often do you see a car over there? Caution's out for the first time today on lap number 30. Ooh, I'm dizzy after watching that when he was spinning so much. That was a really, really big crash. I, I want to know what happened there. Just, oh, he touched, just touched the rear. Yeah. That is very unusual because Logan Simmons barely even flinched. I mean, usually you see the car in front spinning out like that. I have never seen the car tagging another get sent up and over from a little touch just like that. Jamie Wilson had nowhere to go. And, of course, Marty Jr. had nowhere to go as well. All three cars slammed into the catch fencing in turn number three. Went for some wild, wild rides. Jamie Wilson flipped over the wall and against the uh, pedestrian fencing on the inside line. There was the contact in all its beauty and slow motion. But how often do you see something like that? And look at this spectacle. Three cars flipping, flying everywhere. Keep eyes on Jamie Wilson's car, that a white and cyan uh, number 87, because he's going to flip all the way to the inside, over the guardrail, and right against the pedestrian fence that separates that from where the uh, from where spectators can stand with the RVs. Uh, continuing to just fly, takes out one of the infield lights as well, and there you go, comes to rest against the fencing. Yellow out for the first time today. Pit stops well underway as well. Joshua Chin looks to be holding them as we exit pit road. It almost looked like in that replay that the number uh, 75 of Logan Simmons actually checked up into uh, in, in, into that car. So I'm not too sure what happened there or why, why he would have checked up, but it really looked like he slowed down because he hit the back of that car with a lot of force. Oh dear, I just saw something devastating. Lucas Laville is in pit road without a rear wing. Uh oh So something else has happened uh, under this caution. Oh, there's actually, hold on, there's actually a second incident while all that was going on. I just looked back and saw it now. Johnny Garrett slid up the track. That scared LaVille into the outside wall. LaVille spun round and then collected Stefan Rossman, and that caused him to lose his rear wing. So a wow. devastating blow for LaVille. He could lose the points lead because of this. Wow. You know, the last time the series racers, we were on board with LaVille, there was the contact. Johnny Garrett just going up the track, I guess didn't realize LaVille was coming, but uh, the last time the CIS ran here was in 2017. It was the season finale. It was the most, it was the most dramatic race of the entire season. 
Well, I guess we're about to have that here today because Lucas Laville, he needed to finish good here. He's not going to finish at all. Is he out? Oh my, he has retired the car. Well, I mean, wow. he has to. It's going to he... take five minutes to fix that rear wing. He's gonna have, he is going to have to have the race of his life at Indianapolis. He's going to have to hope for a miracle. Maybe you know, something the... happens, or he's going to hope that in these next... 170 or so laps, something happens to these leaders. You know who this helps out? It helps out his teammate, Robert Grosher, who's running the fifth position right now. It also helps out Joshua Chin, who's still leading. So, uh, oh boy. I mean, how often do you see championship battles come down to something like that? I mean, not to mention, this is the second race in a row that LaVille has DNF'd. If you remember, uh, well, you, you probably wouldn't remember, but at Watkins Glen, he crashed out early on a mistake completely of his own doing, if memory serves me right, as well. So uh, LaVille definitely not having the race uh, that he wanted to have. Uh, so devastating news there for Lucas LaVille, uh, who quite possibly is going to be done for this race. The great flag, though, is Whoa. back up in the air, Josh Richardson. Robert Grosser seemed to have been a bog down there. He seemed missed out on that on that restart. As it looks like Andrew Aitken might actually have a look already on Niall McBride. On the outside. Has to slot back in line. Andrew Aitken now looks at the outside for a second time off of turn number four. So Aka trying to find momentum. I don't think he's going to find it, though, because now McBride has got the draft of Joshua Chin to help. I think that's what he's trying to use right now. There's a big field coming further back, though. If you look on back to Ton Novosad, he's ending up a big train of cars right now. They're starting to form almost like uh, like our field was before that first yellow came out on lap number 30. So uh, definitely seems like we're about to have ourselves another big fight. This one much bigger in the second field. Taking a look at Andre Giash right now, who's on the inside of Tristan Hauser up front. Johnny Garrett's trying to do battle for who can lead this train. Yeah, is that 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 backpack this time being the larger one? That's definitely going to help them get back up, and uh, they're going to end up going toe to toe with those leaders. Especially, and they're going too wide already again, straight after the, the pace, guys. They've got a lot of confidence now in this track, in the cars, especially after the pit stop. Well, these drivers are on the fresh tires and they're wanting to utilize them as much as they can right now. No doubt several drivers have topped up their fuel tanks as well. Otherwise, they would be having to pit within about uh, 20 laps, give or take, thereabouts. So uh, this is definitely has been a poor tire and fuel strategy for a lot of drivers, which might throw the pit strategy up into the air. It was looking to be a, an open and shut, really a four-stopper book. You know, pit every 50 or so laps, you'll easily get it to the end of the 208. Pitting that lap 30, though, that's going to throw a big wrench in the works for a few of these teams. They're going to be having to start uh, running some fuel numbers here to make sure they don't overfuel the car and spend longer in the pit road than they need. Because a heavy car, that's the one that you don't want to have on a track like this. Yeah, you need to utilize speed. You need a light car for speed. Just don't want that heavy car. But, I mean, you run too light and uh, you'll, lose, you'll lose control of the thing. Just send it into a wall, so... Finding that balance. It's a very fine line, isn't there, uh, when you're trying to find a battle like this uh, and when you're trying to find, you know, balancing with your car and trying to fight with the cars around you as well. There is that fine line. Uh, it's very easy for these cars to kind of suck into one another as well and get each other arrow loose. We've seen that happen many times in the past before, so uh, we're not surprised we saw that once or twice uh, here today as well before uh, things were concluded. Johnny Garrett's still heading that outside line. you got uh, Todd Novosad leading the inside line right now. So far, uh, no real battles have been shaping up just yet. The leaders are just passing by Stefan Rossman, uh, who's up on the outside line. Rossman, of course, had suspension damage as a result of that mess as well. Uh, so he's more than a lap down at this point. So Rossman, definitely, he not, he's not having the race. He wanted to have uh, this big group here. I think this could be where we might be seeing that second caution uh, come on out, unless the groupings up front close in a little bit more. Ooh, you can see them jumping around there on that bottom line, that top line sort of breaking away, no one really confident enough or just wanting to go to that that top line. So just three of them there, and, and, and we see Todd Novosad just sort of run away with the with the rest of the pack. So there's two on the tie line, just going to have to slot in. 
Sometimes this is all you can do is just kind of slide in and wait for an opportunity. It's uh, far from easy to get passes done at a track like this, you know, where you're running completely flat out. Is you watch the train just snake left and right all over that bottom groove. I mean, it's like drivers are trying to figure out where they want to be. They're trying to figure out how they can get to where they want to be. I mean, this is a, it's certainly good racing we're seeing here as all these drivers are managing to keep it remarkably clean, which is exactly what you want to see as well. Uh, up front in the lead, a train of four has formed. Uh, Josh Chin at the head, McBride second, Aiken third, uh, Ethan Aiken in the fourth position. Behind them, you got another group as well, and that is headed up by the other championship contender still in play, Robert Grosher. Yeah, that, that backpack is going to really want to look to, to single file and just push, push, push to, to catch those leaders. I'm sure they'll catch them in no, in no time, but probably want to get there sooner rather than later. There's still 150-odd laps to go, so still a lot of race to go. A lot of race left to go. Indeed, 164 uh, laps officially on the board at the last time by at the line. This is a I mean, I, I'm honestly kind of speechless. I mean, so rare do we see a, a championship battle just split open at the seams like that. I mean, Lucas Laville needed a good finish today. Uh, he needed to make sure that he finished well. And I honestly think starting in the back, uh, that might have been what did him in because he was stuck at the back where Johnny Garrett also was when he slid up the track and unfortunately scared Laville into the wall. So I think that very well could be what the really what the big issue was and that might be what did him in of course uh we'll never fully know will we as uh this field continues to scrap away right now this uh, little pack here this kind of second grouping is definitely the most aggressive as all the others are completely single filed out right now these guys are double file almost all the way through these guys are going for it they are not stuffing around they are going to go for it go hard or go home but yeah, it's a Lucas Lavelle. I'm not too. Yeah, that that they're all gonna be thinking now. All those 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 guys going for that championship lead. They are gonna be thinking that this is gonna be their race. So it's definitely gonna get a lot. Can only get more interesting from here. And we still have to continue to keep in mind of Robert Grosher's 20 point penalty because the way this is looking right now, I believe if he takes that 20 point penalty here, which of course he has to, he could very well lose out on second place in the points lead are in the points to Joshua Chin right now as it stands. So uh, it's it's a devastating blow right now for both the Vortex Sim Racing Machines as they were running 1-2 in the championship. Well, Joshua Chin uh, for Team Chimera, well, he's looking like he wants to go ahead and take that lead back ASAP from the points. Of course, he missed about two, three races, and we thought he was done after that. And then he comes back and Watkins Glen, wins the darn thing, puts himself in, podium, er, in championship contention once again. I mean, this has just been an absolutely shocking comeback from that 93 machine. And it's a good one to see, too, because his return has completely blown this championship wide open. Yeah, especially with the double, it's double, double points finale next week. So we got, uh, next next month, sorry. Uh, and that's going to help all of them, even in the close contention, because all it takes is a win and, and another issue for Lucas Laville or anyone in, in that top contention on that championship leaderboard and it blows it open wide open again now i just want you to picture this how do you think the points would look if robert grosher were to have some severe issue in this race as well it, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen this in fact uh, actually at the last race in zanvort those two drivers actually tangled with each other and ruined each other's chances at going for a race win so it's it's big. This is a really, really big situation that all the champion contenders are finding themselves in, and they have to be considering every possibility at this point. Yeah, every their, their mind's got to be racing. Do I? Don't I? Do I? Do I go for this move? Do I don't? Do I not go for this move? As we see, number twenty going up. Look for the outside. Oh. Making contact. To push or no. not to push? That is the question. It would seem. <laughs> I don't think pushing is a good idea in these cars, as we saw it before. Pushing doesn't really go that well. Yeah, certainly not. It's uh, something that's been tried and tested uh, over the decades of Indy cars, and in no cases has it ever ended up all too well. Now, has it? Joshua Chin still leading. He's led uh, pretty much every single lap so far in this race. Uh, He's uh, just turning now lap number 54 we just went on to now in this one. So in the penultimate round, we got 154 
uh, laps remaining. We are closing in. We're about a quarter of the way now through this race. So far, the only driver that seems to be one of the big moves is Ethan Hagen, who is still trying to get around Niall McBride. He's getting so impatient. He's really trying to get around Niall McBride that he's just not finding enough pace to get around him. I think Andrew Aitken's looking and maybe help him on the outside, then just drops down to the inside, maybe wanting to lock him out. But it looks like he's going for it. He's side by side now. Gonna get around him. Needs Andrew Aitken to really help him on that top line. Otherwise, I don't think anything's gonna come of it. I think Andrew Aitken's just taking it easy right now. He's decided not to push. He's just standing by and he's just kind of watching this whole thing right now. I think that is exactly what. Uh, he's wanted to do um, in the midst of this one. Well, I guess while we're doing this, uh, we apparently have ourselves uh, a little bit of a special guest right now. Lucas Laville joining us up in the broadcast booth. Laville, definitely not the race that you wanted to have and definitely did not want to see it end quite so early. Absolutely not. Uh, I was out of position early just because of my own mistakes last race and uh, I was faster than cars around me but uh, as you can see right now uh, you can't have a run on the outside if you don't have help and I didn't have help so I was stuck out there but uh, things were fine until uh, that yellow and uh, couldn't avoid people people like swerving under caution but that's the way it is um, all the cushion is gone for the title that he had and uh, it's gonna be winner takes it at Dindy, I guess, which is make, gonna make a next very interesting broadcast for you guys. Well, it's been an interesting broadcast as it has been today. I mean, my goodness, this is uh, this has definitely been a, a certain barnstormer of these past uh, few races in the midst of this as well. Uh, gotta keep in mind as well the, the points uh, situation. Um, going into this one as well, you yourself have an 11 point penalty that you have to serve. I believe uh, after this race, your teammate Grosh has got a 20 point penalty he has to serve. So all of a sudden, it looks like Joshua Chan might be back into things as well. So it's looking to be a three way battle between you guys going into the season finale. Absolutely. Uh, no, no other way to put it. Uh, looks like Josh is in a good position to uh, run away with it today, and uh, Robert is stable in fifth. So. Uh, the gang is going to be back together and uh, yeah, I really believe that it's going to be whoever finishes the highest at Indy takes the title between the three of us, which is uh, which was already stressful for me coming into today with uh, the start from the rip penalty, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a very long uh, four weeks to prepare for the race. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, an intense uh, few weeks as well as we're seeing your race leaders right now just starting by Stefan Rossman uh, on the outside line. Seeing a battle for the lead on the screens as well right now. I believe you're gonna be kind of sticking around with us here as well and just kind of giving uh, your input on things, you know, as a driver as the race goes on as well. Uh, well, I guess to start things off, uh, what are your thoughts on the battles that we've been seeing so far in the race? Uh, pretty much what we expect. Well, we had like two plans to plans with Vortex, it was either going to be a big pack, like it was in real life in 2011, or exactly what we're seeing, like the field very uh, single file and uh, very hard to move up the field, so it's really not surprising. Um, the, 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 the power teams are where they should be with a uh, camera up front and some independents that are usually very fast, so no surprise uh, regarding the field as we have. Uh, Logan trying to make a move for P5 up there, but um, uh, yeah, so far so good. Uh, pretty clean race, only four drivers out, including myself. So uh, yeah, so far so good. Well, let's pass things over to you now, Daniel, because you're in the midst of all this. You know, you're watching all this battling as well. Now, how about the battle in the second group that's going on right now? As uh, Logan Simmons and Robert Grosher have begun uh, to pull away a little bit from that second grouping. Oh, contact! Oh, up there. contact! Second round, hard into the wall, bared upside down, tail over tail, end over end, oh. flying down the front stretch. And look out for the big field coming up on them now, and uh, Barrett's going to come the rest of the infield. Uh, Ten points for form. Uh, that was definitely a. I think that almost tops the ride we saw in the first yellow that resulted with a car up against the pedestrian fencing. 
I think I'm gonna have to give him a three for landing. That, that was that was uh, upside down. It's really not where you want to be when you land. But one oh yeah, just a bit of contact on the rear there. I spun him out, and it looks like who was it that got front wing damage? That was Adam Shipstone. Adam, Sh yeah, he uh, he he's got some front wing damage. He's gonna drop back, but that's that's what it takes. There, the four up front as well. There, Ethan was really going for it on Joshua Chin. Really, really trying to get around him, and looked like the the two behind him were actually trying to help him on that outside line. But that's going to bunch up the field now. Wonder if they'll make a pit stop again. Well, let's uh, pass things back over to you here, Lucas, because taking a look at this slow motion right now, ah, uh, yeah, that's a tough one to call. Laville was uh, or sorry, not Laville. Uh, Josh Bear was trying to kind of you know keep things steady. You had Shipstone that was pushing up a little bit more. Uh, how do you kind of go about that thing? Because that's just one of the products of, you know, open racing at an oval when you have a situation like that happen. You know, two lines converging, getting sucked up into one another. Do you think, uh, as a driver, you would know this better than anybody else, does Dirty Air ever play into a factor in these types of scenarios? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's like, it's a product of this kind of racetrack, as you said, for sure. Vegas being very high banked, you're going to have people like all over the place all the time but I feel like this one uh, Josh Cape kind of forgot where he was or maybe uh, the AA there just moved up a bit and probably just a misunderstanding regarding what racing group everybody has and that can, that sent Josh in the wall but that's exactly a racing incident but you know uh, it's, it's very difficult to judge when you are 215 miles an hour out of turn 4 here uh, trying to guess what traffic is doing, what the pack is doing, what yourself are are doing, because you're constantly on the adjustment buttons and trying to set up a move, as Josh was trying to do there. So, very difficult to judge. Joshua Chin wins the race off pit road. Ethan Egan got second. Andrew Aiken leapfrogs. Niall McBride and takes third. McBride fourth. Grocer fifth. Logan Simmons has sixth. Andrew Wood jumped over. Uh, Andrew, sorry, Andrew Wood and Dave Lobo, uh got over Andrea Giash, uh, who was at 12th at the start of the lap. Then you have Todd Novosad, uh, Max Davies, who was in 19th at the start of the lap. He is going to be running. I think just outside the top 10 when things cycle on out. Tristan Hauser, so for Adam Shipstone, uh, obviously he lost a lot of spots. He was a, uh, one of the results of that mess. He had to change the front wing, so he lost a handful of spots as well here, Daniel. For now, though, the other two championship contenders, they're still running with completely clean race cars. Yeah, they, uh, they're running up front um, with the championship runners again. It's, it's Joshua Chin, and who, who is it again, Lucas? Uh, it was Robert Grosher and Joshua Chin right now. Okay, yeah, so Robert Gross is in that fifth position. He's definitely going to have to look for a, a couple couple of positions trying to get up front. But again, they're bunched up again. they just got to focus on this restart and uh, get that car back in. He's sitting a little further behind. He did this last time. The, that group in front of him sort of broke away. So, yeah, Lucas... So Lucas, how about we go back uh, to you now uh, for this one, and well, let's touch a bit on rest uh, race restarts uh, as well, because obviously the the base start we saw a massive field form up front. The second restart, though, the faith was actually in the back. There was only a four-car train up in front. What do you think some of the factors are uh, that impact how these restarts form up once the cars get up to speed? Well, first big big first thing is reaction time from what you can see. Uh, the cars around you do. If you're up front, obviously it's easier to see where the leader is when the leader is taking off. So uh, you can try to time yourself if you know the driver as well with his tendencies with restart timing. But the further back you go, you really can't see anything because you, you obviously have the front wing of the car, the rear wing of the car in front of you. Sorry, uh, right in front of you. So timing is a, a very important part, and also how you modulate the throttle it's a very difficult car to to put the power on and at 8000 rpm you can really just lose the car if you have too much power on it so that's the second thing and the third one is the gearing if you have too tall or too short of a first gear and second gear you're gonna see big gaps forming between the cars 
this is the three main things obviously you have car positioning if you really hold the outside lane to protect uh, all these kind of things but uh, yeah it looks like it's gonna be a very very interesting restart uh, like pretty much two f two like two half stints completed now so people should have a good idea of what they have and what the people around them have so it's gonna be very important to figure this one out 139 laps to go at the line uh, live time is available at racespot.tv forward slash cis joshua chan leads them off to the green we're green flag racing for the third time today here at las vegas motor speedway crossing on lap number 70 chin takes it away it's a big jump for him might not be good though he might be susceptible to an assault here uh, from ethan agan uh daniel ethan is gonna want to get straight back up at him and get around that car he is not looking like he wants to sit around behind oh, joshua on. chin hang on dave lolo's in trouble in the back uh down for eighth place his son have pulled off the track no idea what's going on with the number 808 machine he's coming down to pit road though so disaster for dave lolo it would seem I don't know. What, I wonder what's going on there. There's, there's. Well, watching. I wasn't watching him. Yeah, it just seems he's come down off the track. Maybe he's forgotten to take fuel or something. That's a strange one. You Nothing weird on the restart, though, from a driver's perspective. No passing on the inside or anything weird. So yeah, that's a very surprising. Well, he just got the car in the jacks. He took the four tires. He's already off of them. He's. It, it, that's a strange one. He's it's on very, the power, so yeah. One. That's probably fuel actually yeah. he was on the power but he's not moving so uh, yeah he's out so probably technical issues of some sort wow that's what it seems to be interesting but i guess that's that's what it takes this is sim racing all it takes is there he goes yeah that's he it just parked it he just retired the car yeah that's all it takes is a technical issue on on your end and something goes wrong and uh this, that's sim racing for you. That's definitely uh, that, that it hurts to have a race end just like that. Uh, that's never how you want to see a race end up, but it just ha that just happens to be the roll of the dice. It would seem at some points. Got a three wide battle though for the eighth, ninth, and tenth place. Ton Novosad in the middle, Giash up in the middle. You got one car on the outside as well, trying to get as who it is. It's Adam Shipstone right now that's running the outside groove as well. So uh, this is definitely a big fight going on here for three wide for the eighth, ninth, tenth position on the racetrack into turn number three. This is getting way too close for comfort, too close to a restart. Max Davies having a look, trying to get involved in this as well. There's still three yep. wide trying to, I don't know what's, what they're thinking here. You know, three wide could certainly work at a track like this. Four wide, not so much. So you gotta hope that they don't go four wide. At a place like Texas, maybe. But this is certainly not Texas. This is a lot narrower uh, than that track is in of itself. So they're gonna double file it out for now. Once again, the big field forming up deep in the field and not up front at all. It's really just kind of running single file up front right now. Three wide again, though. Shipstone is determined to make that outside line work by the wall. Here comes Tristan Hauser trying to get his nose in there. He is going to get the nose in there. So Tristan Hauser trying to cut off Shipstone. Uh, Shipstone, unfortunately, not deterred. He's going to be uh, now back to the inside trying to look for the outside again. He's trying to get around Todd Novosad, but Novosad is not letting him through at all. Oh, he's going to look at the inside now. They're, they're pulling away. Well. Tristan's dropped back a little bit. But if Adam, Adam's got to be careful. Tristan will, will, will get that run on the inside and lock him out. And, and, and Shipstone will just drop back. But they seem to drop drop down now. They're, they're not favoring that top line anymore. But they still look at it and try and get around him. They, they've just got to stay clean and get back up to that, that front runners. The, the, the four or five of them. And uh, that's all they got to focus on rather than racing each other. And then focus on it later, I think. Still going three wide. This is, this is great racing. Now we got a two car run round the outside. Three wide down the back stretch. Shipstone trying to have a run in Novosad. Novosad trying to have a run at Andrea Giash. So far, no driver is able to break through. I think this is going to end in complete and utter disaster if these guys don't cop it down because they are getting way too close for comfort. Is Shipstone trying it again? I don't think he is. Remember, Adam Shipstone was caught up in an earlier wreck and he had that front wing damage. He might be trying to get it to the front. Now, try the outside again. And it's a three. Oh, he's oh, right. He's so close. Oh, he's in the wall. 
Chips it hard into the wall. That's going to break the suspension for sure. Maybe the tub on that car as well. Disaster oh, for the 88 machine. And he's just missed the pit the pit straight as well. Oh, he's just going to cut it. He's, I think he's just going to take it. It's either that or he spins out trying to get back. He doesn't have a choice. What is he going to do here? Pull the car in, either fix it up or retire it. What did I tell you? I told you that was not going to end well. Yeah, it looks like he retired the car. Yeah, that's, that is not good at all. That's not something you like to see in the slightest. So he's still got this very, very fierce battle uh, heating up here in this tail end of the field for the final positions of the top 10. Yeah, I think he was just running a bit too hard, really pushing to try and get in front there. And, and it sort of was his own demise because he just got a bit too close to the rear and uh, pushed him up into the wall at the wrong time. They're still, they're still going hard out at this, this backpack, but as I said before, like, they just need to focus on being clean, being fast, and they'll catch those leaders in no time. Absolutely. Uh, so you got to just kind of hope that maybe you can keep it out of each other long enough that uh, you can get things secured for yourself here. Uh, well, meanwhile, while we're continuing to watch this battle uh, hot on up, we'll definitely keep eyes on this one for now. Let's bring one of the other drivers, though, uh, that unfortunately uh, his race ended a bit too early for his liking as well. Joshua Baird uh, joined us in the commentary booth. Joshua, an unfortunate ending for you today. Uh, well, it's definitely not the way you want to see one of these races end. What happened? No, definitely not. Um, I think the biggest problem is, is you know, you we want to try and maximize downforce, and I think, uh, you know, there's um, different setups out there, and some of them ended up being a little tighter than others, uh, and I I think I pinched maybe a little too hard on Adam, and uh, he pushed up with the tightness of his car and happened to spin me, so I think it was just a racing incident, and that's what happens when you're at a fast track like this, and where you need to hit as close to the bottom as you can to try and uh, keep in, keep your spot. It's definitely uh, very unfortunate, but uh, I, if I can put some silver lining in here for you, you did go out in style. That was a most spectacular ride uh, that you took down the front stretch and into the infield grass. Uh, of course, still one race left to go. That is no doubt at Indianapolis, a track that well, while they might have some sort of characteristics, both of it in an oval, uh, a prime thing. Definitely still a very big challenge in of itself. What what are you going to be thinking going into the season finale here? Well, to be honest, I'm still a little dizzy because I'm in, uh, racing in VR there. So uh, Vegas or uh, flipping like that was uh, quite a ride. Um, but going into Indianapolis, uh, last year Iconic had a really strong ending by uh, going to Indianapolis. I think we had a, a chance for a podium and ended it on a pit strategy that kept us outside the top five. So... Hopefully looking for a rebound race uh, here at Indy to try and get a good win to finish the season. And hopefully you can have that good race to end it off. It's always a good thing to end off the season uh, on a high note as well. Uh, well, we do have a couple of other notes to talk on yet uh, before this broadcast ends. So uh, we are going to have to let you go here. Before we you let you go, though, anybody that you'd like to shout out for here today? Yeah, huge thanks to my teammates this week. They had uh, they did such a great job at helping us all work together to get a really good setup. I think uh, we have a really uh, good chance still for Iconic to finish podium if we keep it clean. Um, so uh, thanks to them and uh, thanks to all my sponsors. And thank you, Joshua Baird, for uh, uh, for giving taking the time to come on here, give us a chat. Uh, uh, tough luck today. Good luck next week in in Indianapolis. All right, thanks guys for all you do. That was Joshua Baird, who's going to be officially classified as 23rd right now um, in the uh, in the final standings today after taking a spectacular ride down the front straightaway to bring on the second yellow of the race. Uh, there is still one driver that we're going to give a talk to when they are ready. For now, though, uh, keeping eyes on this battle. Uh, it kind of up on up here. This is further up the field now. You're looking on board Andrew Wood, who's running right behind a three-car train. That's Logan Simmons, Robert Grosher, and Andrew Aiken. This is the battle for fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh on your screen right now here, Daniel. 
Yeah, I've, I've been watching Andrew, and he just keeps going to that top line and then dropping down to the bottom, and I wonder if that's just him trying to maximize that speed and trying to get a run, as you look here, as he's going to go outside, trying to have a look at the number six car of Logan, no, sorry, number 75 car of Lo Logan Simmons. Yeah, he keeps going on that outside line, and I'm just wondering why that is. So, yeah, he goes up high and drops down, and that's obviously going to be a bit, bit more wear on the tires, instead of just sort of sitting behind the cars. It looks like they're going to break away together and try and go on the outside. It's a battle for fourth here, is it? Yeah. Well, it looks like he's trying to diamond off the corner right now, which means he can maximize the speed he can get on the exit and get a better run. I think that's what he's trying to do right here. Enter high, exit low. Logan Simmons seems to have caught on because he's going to the outside line now to try and block any run that he's getting. Simmons is also trying to make a move on Robert Grosher. I think that's where Simmons is going. He's going to the top side of Robert Grosher in that number three card. This might be a bit treacherous here for Grosher because they're getting awfully close to some points on corner entry, which is definitely uh, not what you want to see. Uh, that three car train you see just up there, that is your battle for the race lead as well, where Joshua Chin is still leading that fight. Um, so... Uh, take a look up to this three-car train out in the lead. The battle for the podium positions got Chen still leading the race. Now McBride getting Whoa, really close so to close. Ethan Agin. Ethan Agin coming back down onto that single file. They, they've they just got to stick single file now just to try and stay away from that four-pack. That that four-pack, that battle for, for fourth is, is catching them quite quickly now as Ethan's looking to go for a move on the outside of Joshua Chen. Just Im he's very impatient. He just keeps going around and around. But it looks like he might actually have the move done. Yeah, it looks like it might have the move done as well. So let's keep eyes on this battle for the race lead. And we're going to bring in one more driver um, whose day has unfortunately ended a little earlier than you probably would have liked. Andrew Adair Saunders uh, joins us in the booth as well. Uh, Andrew, if you are with us here, uh, how has your uh, what, what are your thoughts about how the race has gone so far? Well, where should I start? I said, well, I had a fantastic car and, and after the first caution we were kind of a, I was kind of in the second group, group and I was feeling quite confident that we could, fit, uh, could do a good race and no problems at all but uh, then Ships down set went slightly high. Tagged my teammate oh. Joshua. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry to cut to you cut off you there, Andrew, but not the right spot. spot. The right spot. The right spot. In, turn in turn number two, this could be a disaster for the lead group coming up on them right now. We might get a yellow here. You're not too sure what happened there. The, uh, I just saw him drop down to the apron. I, I missed what happened. But that 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 pack of four is going to benefit from this, and they're going to comes right back at them. Ethan's gonna have to work together with Joshua if they're gonna get away here. But he's still a, looking to go for that move. It was a bit of a slap to the wall that now McBride took. That sent him spinning to the inside line. And I guess that kind of brings me to another point I actually wanted to ask you about, Andrew. And it's about the challenges of the track. Because what a lot of people might be seeing as we take the replay up on our screens now is cars just driving around in circles with their foot pinned to the floor. I think you can attest though that it, it's not nearly that easy. No, it's well driving seems easy, but what you're paying attention is less is the car handling good or something because the conditions are so cold. We are barely running any downforce. What but it's still hard in terms of we are it's a pack race, so we are paying a, a really close attention where everyone is sticking to our line, making sure that we are not making the tiniest mistake to um, basically kick us out of the race. Just like Shipstone I wanted to go in, he slightly went high, attacked my teammate Joshua bad, and then I was basically caught in the middle. Those tiny mistakes can have major, major consequences, and we have to make sure that we do not do those. We've already seen the results of a couple of those little mistakes earlier in this race, and no doubt they're not going to be the last mistakes uh, that will be made either. A uh, final race coming up next month on November the 8th at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Another oval, but one that drives a lot more differently than this one. 
Uh, what do you think the challenges are for that track, and how are you going to prepare for that? Well, the preparation, well, first of all, we are going to focus on, well, first of all, we're going to get a, a base set up together and then a quali set because there, we are not qualifying and racing on the same day. There are two separate days separated by, I believe, two weeks. Lee Gatman can be correct me if I'm wrong here. So, but basically, first, after we got the baseline set up, we are focusing purely on quali to get that pinned down after qualifying and maybe the bump day which we hope we are not going to be involved in and um, we are going to focus all the rest of our efforts on the race and I have a personal goal in iRacing I have never ever finished a darn Indy 500 race it doesn't Ethan's matter out. sorry sorry to interrupt you there sorry no, that's, I'm wrong sorry sorry <laughs> may I continue <laughs> Continue, please, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, I haven't ever finished a darn Indy 500 race on iRacing. It doesn't matter if it, whether it was official or here in the CIS League. I have not finished any one of them. My primary goal will be to finish one of those darn things. A fine goal indeed. Before we let you go here, Ethan, uh, anybody did you, uh, sorry, before we let you go here, Andrew, anybody <laughs> you'd like to thank uh, for us today or shout out? Okay, me, Andrew D. Saunders, not Ethan Hagen. I'm going to <laughs> shout out, make a shout out to Fanat, Tech, Playseed, and DRE for the products they provide and I use for driving. I'll also, our team sponsors, which would be New Century, Colorworks, Dave Dot. <laughs> Come. Did I open wheels? Start. Come. Um. I. And dynamic solutions. Those are the ones that are on my car. I hope I got them this time. Everyone. And thank you, Mr. Saunders, for taking the time to give us a chat uh, here today. Good luck next week. Or sorry, next month at Indianapolis. Thank you and have fun. So luck, I think Andrew. that will about do it there for the drivers that give us a talk. Battle for the lead is very much on over while that was all going on. Ethan Egg has taken the lead successfully from Joshua Chin, despite Chin's attempts to take the lead back. This is a battle that might be raging on up throughout the rest of this race, as we're just past that halfway point now. Yeah, I, I don't know what I saw now. I was thinking of the live timings, and Ethan Egan's name just sort of grayed out like the like the people who, who, who are DNF from this race. I just thought he had been taken out, but... Uh, but Toddy had a connection spike. But yeah, he's made, he's made that move. He made it quite cleanly in front of Joshua Chin there. And we can see that that pack again is closing in on them. Uh, so th this race is about to get really interesting in a couple laps. It's actually true. That backpack is closing in by about a few hundreds a lap. But a few hundreds is all it is going to take. Uh, well, it does seem like this is really kind of the calm before the storm. So on that note... May as well pay homage uh, to the title sponsor of the league. Of course, uh, drivers have shouted out their own personal sponsors. We may as well give one uh, to the overall sponsor of the 2020 campaign. It is, of course, the Virtual Race Car Engineer. It's a software package that includes the setup developer tool and the Virtual Race Car Engineer. These assist both real and virtual race car drivers. The setup developer tool walks the user through a step-by-step -step process of creating and customizing your very own personalized baseline race setup. It does this by asking very simple questions about the car type, track type, and behavior of the car on the track. The race car engineer will then further fine-tune this setup to get the very most out of the car, when with it offering uh, both whole lap and corner-specific advice. BRZ will get the very best out of your setup. Both the setup developer tool and the virtual race car engineer can be found in the link below this live stream. So, 112 laps is where we are at right now on the board. Only 96 left to go. Yeah, it looks like we've got uh, Logan Simmons that are having a bit of connection issues, sort of jumping in and out. That's definitely not going to help this pack, because they, as soon as he jumps out, they lose that little bit of draft, and it's going to keep popping Yellow's back out. in cautions out. And it looks like we might have had uh, some sort of issue on the back straight. Oh, turn two, Ooh. big wreck. That's where it happened. This is in the big group. Yoni, it was a big checkup. Yoni Kainen started this when uh, Vesa tried to come down across his nose. Kainen checks up and Arthur oh. Hugh just oh. runs him over. 
Both cars slammed the outside wall. Two more cars actually got caught up in front of them. Johnny Friends Garrett and Todd Novosad got collected as well when they both got run over. So two massive, massive incidents over there on the back straightaway and off of turn number two. Mm, it sort of looked like, uh, I don't know who it was, try to move, someone tried to move down and he just sort of scared him and he checked up. And guys behind didn't see him and it just sort of spiraled out of control. That was uh, About the Finnish driver in the 93, I believe, that tried to do this. Uh, the 96, excuse me, uh, that tried to make that work. And unfortunately, he went, he started to come down and it wasn't clear. So Yona kind of actually checked up so he wouldn't spin him and ended up getting spun out himself. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that's what happened. He was just trying to just trying to play it safe when the guy he, I don't think he, he must not have realized how uh, how close the guys were before. As you can see, yeah, he just moves down there. He, yeah, he, he checked up and just yeah, the guys behind it didn't 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 react to it and it it, it did not end well. Well, it's not like they didn't react to it, but when you're driving at 200 miles through these corners, you have, like, about a fraction of a tenth to react to something like that when you're slowing on that much. I mean, look at how quickly this popped up. I mean, these cars stop on a dime, but you don't want them to stop on a dime because then they'll lock up and go into the outside wall. So that was just, I think that was just poor timing there from, from this. And that, unfortunately, uh, he came down when he wasn't clear. Yoni kind of checked up because he didn't want to get, he didn't want to spin him out. Ended up getting himself spun out because, unfortunately for him, when you have a checkup effect, there's going to be those guys that just don't have enough time to properly react to it. And that is exactly what happened there. Not to mention that second incident, which I believe was a result of cars checking up for that initial accident originally. Yeah, um, what, what was the second incident? I, I missed that one. Uh, that happened uh, just up the road where Johnny Garrett uh, was collected by Todd Novosad and Art McEwen, I believe, uh, uh, just on the exit turn to, and they went flying down the backstretch in their own separate incident as well. I can look back uh, and just kind of give a rundown of what that happened, what happened there as well. So yes, it was for the original incident, uh, to be exact. Uh, uh, Todd Novosad had checked up big time because obviously he was actually getting collected in the wreck. Garrett ran into the back of him, and they all slammed to the outside wall, and unfortunately. Uh, Mike Gerlisha, who was also caught up in this, he just didn't have anywhere to go when he was trying to get by around the outside. In fact, if we could, I'd like to get an onboard camera of that 31 machine because he actually missed the first incident, but was just not able to miss the second one. He was so close to making it out. And unfortunately, well, as the saying goes, that just seems to be how the cookie crumbles. Yeah, I, uh, after we watch this replay, I want to actually talk about uh, how we've gone on the, uh, on the pits. Uh, after the pit stops, because we've got Ethan Agin in first. Joshua Chin is dropped down to fourth after Andrew Aitken and Logan Simmons. But I wonder, I wonder what this is going to do for the race, as we can see. Oh wow, he missed. Oh yeah, he just got collected yeah. into that wall. That's a, <laughs> that's so unlucky. I, it's always, it always feels even worse when you know there was nothing you could do. I mean, even yeah. if he slammed the brakes, he was never going to make it out of that. I mean, there was just nowhere for him to go. And I'm looking back to see what happened to Joshua Chin, because you're right, he's down a few spots. I wonder Especially. if he got a bad pit. Oh, he missed the pit stall. It had to back up. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's a rookie error. That's something I do. <laughs> It's something that everyone does at one point or another. I mean, let's be honest. Every single sim racer uh, that has done a pit stop in a race, they but we've all done it at some point or another. It, it never feels good. Unfortunately, as the saying goes, that's just how the cookie crumbles. So that's this is the replay, those. I believe, of what happened. And we're going to see how Joshua Chin missed his pit stall. It's right at the very end of the pit lane, the very last stall there. So thankfully, it's... Uh, he actually, it's a bit of a risky place to have, do it there because I actually have seen it a couple times in other series where drivers have actually overshot the pit stall and exited the pit road. So the backup into their pit stalls only gets slapped with a black flag for an unsafe pit entry. Yeah, it's one of those things where, where you do it and you go, oh my god, did anyone see that? <laughs> well, unfortunately, Mr. Chin, we did. And we saw every second of it, and we're going to be showing it once again uh, right here. So there you can see Ethan Egan pulling into his own pit stall uh, some ways back. There's Joshua Chin right up here, and right about, there Ooh, you go, yeah. just overshot it, had to back up, and that costs him another two spots. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it, it, it could have been worse. He could have gone out of the pit road, like you said. 
But I mean, he hasn't dropped too far back. He's only down in fourth, and, and if he gets a good restart, he can get back home. We saw that pack of four uh, after the two of them, him and uh, Joshua Chin, that is, and Ethan Aiken had split away. We saw that pack catching them up again as we get ready to go green here for the fourth time here at Las Vegas. Now the question is going to be, how good of a restart did Ethan Aiken get? Doesn't look like he got the best one. Andrew Aiken uh, timed it perfectly. He's already on him. Uh, Joshua Chin is slotted in right behind Logan Simmons. Is going to try to get around him here. Yeah, yeah he's, he's going, going for it. Joshua, Joshua Chin is not going to mess around here. He is going to be kicking himself for that pit stop. And he's going to want to get right back up at Ethan. He needs to make sure he is patient, though. That's the thing. Patience is key. If he gets too impatient and he makes a mistake, it is going to cost him a championship. He needs to finish well in this race if he's going to have a hope at going for the title again. He said it at Watkins Glen that he does have a chance at going for the title, and he was going to try to make a run at it. He needs to keep his composure here and make sure that he does not make any mistakes that can cost him a race win. Yeah, he's got to set those emotions aside, just sort of let that, that pit stop... Just let it go and just focus on, on, on the race ahead, especially he's got Robert uh, Grosser behind in uh, sixth. Uh, he's a little bit of a ways behind. He's also going to be thinking about that as well in the back of his mind because he's also out going for that championship. But it looks like there's only 12 cars running. Right? Yeah. Yeah, not a lot of cars uh, running right now on the track at all. Looks to be about... Uh... 14 right now that are on the track total check that 16 you have one car that scores laps down and he's just uh you know trying to pick up spots as he goes so uh this is definitely kind of what he wants to see but look at this they've actually closed the gap josh chin stayed in line with logan simmons and now they're right on the back of there andrew we are Aiken. so this is perfect for joshua chin because he's right on the back of him now andrew wood though is also closing so is Max Davies and Robert Grosher. So this could be big. We could have ourselves a potential six-car battle for the lead if this lead group starts to get side-by-side -side, uh, for the overall race lead. Chin's already looking at the outside here, trying to have a go at Logan Simmons. And we can see that there was that a pack of, I think, about five cars behind uh, from about, I think, uh, Andrea Giash uh, from about P8 to probably P13 behind them and that that's going to catch them unless they can make that six pack that's going to be very close to see if if that that five stack of cars can can stay single file and, and catch these guys because they're going to be battling for those positions joshua chin is not going to want to sit in this fourth position for long logan simmons right now all over the back end of andrew Aka, all over that car's gearbox trying to get away through there as well chin dropped back by some margin he's trying to just use the draft to get himself back up there Andrew Wood is closing in though, so it's a five car battle potentially for the race lead. Here goes Josh Chin to the outside, trying to follow Logan Simmons as Simmons is trying to go to the outside. Now Chin's back to the bottom, trying to get in line with whoever can get in the bell's trap uh, through these different lines. Simmons' charge to the outside didn't quite work. He might have to try it again here a little bit later. Can he try it in turn one? Don't think so. He's going to have to slot through the line. He's going to have to wait till the back straight away. Yeah, he's he's trying to he's really sort of going left and right, trying to look to see where he can get that run. As we see Logan Simmons go to the outside again, just trying to go at the wrong time, trying to get that run on the outside. As we see Andrew Wood and Robert Grosser seems to be dropping back. I think he might drop back to that other pack. As Andrew Wood, it seems, is right up behind Joshua Chin. Can have a look at that. Unfortunately, has lost the draft. He doesn't have a hope now. He's got to hope for another yellow here so we can get back up to this league grouping. Yeah, he's definitely got to join in with that pack, make it like six or seven cars, and just have them sit tight, single file, or cooperate with him so he can get back up and attack Ethan, Andrew Logan, and Joshua again. And Andrew, sorry. So we've only really got two um, big trains on the track right now, and they're both five cars apiece. You got this battle with the front five, and then you got uh, seventh all the way back through 11th place as well. Everybody else is just kind of uh, running on their own. So we're going to keep our eyes on this league grouping here off of turn number uh, four, as obviously this is the very influential battle right now that we're watching. This is the one that uh, you know could potentially play a big role in the championship with your underdog contender so to speak right in the mix of it yeah logan simmons is really going up behind andrew aitken here so it's 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 gonna be close if 
If something goes wrong here, Joshua's gonna have to make that split second decision to go low or high and, and miss this wreck. Because it definitely could happen. Ethan Egan is still leading the train as well. He has really been ever since he took the lead away from Joshua Chin some laps ago. Andrew Aiken might have something to say about that, though. Chin is trying to dime it off the corners again. You see him look just a little bit high on the entry of the corner before diving back down low. Oh, big pop from Andrew Aiken. That scares Simmons up high. So nearly wrecking again. We almost have Joshua number five. I blinked. I missed it. <laughs> That's just how quickly things can it. happen at a track like this. Yeah, he's scared up high, but he looks like he's getting a run on the outside of Andrew Aitken. There's no space for him to slot down, even if he does get the move done. He's going to have to hope that maybe Joshua Chin goes up high with him and they run together. And Andrew Wood's really starting to get into the thick of it now. He's really r right up the back of Joshua Chin. Now, if I was Andrew Wood, what I would do is I would kind of hang around where he is right now, kind of at the edge of where the draft's effective, wait for these guys to get a bit too impatient, maybe take themselves out, and then try to go for the move. You want to keep in mind as well, Wood and Chin are Chimera teammates. So this is also very crucial um, for Joshua Chin as well. He's got a teammate behind him. Now the question is, how exactly do you really work together uh, when it comes to a fight like this? Because already Andrew Wood has started to drop back as well. Oh yeah, he is starting to drop back. That's interesting. I think maybe he was just stuck in between two lines about going with that high line or running with that low line. But yeah, I, I would definitely do what you said, and that's just uh, ha have a look behind, maybe sit in the position that he's sitting and, and wait for him to get impatient, because we know Ethan Egan, he loses that position. He's going to go straight back for it. He is quite impatient <laughs> with sitting behind. He wants to be at the front. He wants to be leading this race. I wonder what Rupert Gross is thinking, because he's in, in really, he really looks to be in no man's land here, just he, sitting in between. He's hours. stressed out, I can tell you that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right, uh, Lucas, right now you're sitting in the box with Robert Gross. Uh, uh, hopefully he can get some momentum going for himself, because of course with that 20 point penalty, he is, he's going to need all the help he can get right about now. Oh yeah, yeah, since uh, Ethan's up front, the guys at the front really, really, like, pulled away and uh, he was surprised that he couldn't really keep up but uh, he's doing fine you just need to uh, unstress and uh, keep going it's still 80 to go so plenty of time for things to happen uh, Logan's up there is pretty racy Andrew's up there is pretty racy so uh, you never know As we see Logan having his connection blips again he's going for that move on the outside of Andrew Aitken he's gonna keep looking for it Up on Trying to make the move line. down the front here. They are approaching lap traffic here in Stefan Rossman as well. Rossman at this point just logging laps, trying to get whatever points he can get. Ethan Aiken now trying to take the little dime in the corner strategy. Stefan Rossman, I expect, is going to stay to the high side here, right by the wall. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's going to let this uh, front field through. Uh, could Josh and Chin potentially make a move here, capitalize for that? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to, as Rossman's already behind him. It looked like Joshua Ch Joshua Chin actually looks like he's dropping back a little bit out of that draft, especially with uh, Andrew Wood as well dropping back. Uh, this is going to be interesting. It, it looks like there, there might be an issue for Joshua Chin. Oh no, he's back up. He's back up to the back now. It looked like he was dropping back there for a little bit. I wonder what's going on in his mind. Well, it probably he's just trying to get the gears turning. Because right now, sitting at a quarter of a second. Uh, back from Logan Simmons and trying to continue to close the gap. You've got about uh, four tenths separated first through fourth as Simmons trying the outside again around Andrew Aiken as Aiken actually goes high. Andrew Aiken going up high, letting Logan Simmons have that spot. So interesting call there from the 27 machine. That is going to help out Joshua Chin massively though here as now he's got himself a bigger trap with the 27 machine. Yeah, it looks like Logan's really looking for that that move on, on Ethan, and he's, I think Ethan's gonna not let him through that easily, so we could have another another caution on our hands, but hopefully not. Let's hope they stay green, as ooh, ooh, Logan is so close to that left, sorry, that back right wheel of Ethan Egan. He is gonna, he is really looking for it, as, as Joshua Chin and Andrew Wood are back into it as he goes around the outside. Doesn't get, can't get it done. He just can't find the speed. As they're looking to go maybe three wide here, just side by side. 
all this side-by-side -side battle is helping Joshua Chin to continue to kind of close in the gap. Simmons still trying to work his way around Ethan Egan. And you heard Lucas LaVille. Um, Logan Simmons is looking racy as Ethan Egan tries to shut the door on him. And unfortunately, well, unfortunately for Egan, couldn't slam the door shut fast enough and almost wipe them both out. But Simmons is looking racy. Very yeah, racy at like that. Yeah, looks like the rest it looked like the rest of those, those those guys in the back, they're also wanting to attack Ethan. Looked like they all went high with... Yeah, it looks like they're going on that high line, trying to get push Logan into that position. They they do not want to let Ethan have this win that easily. Well, not only that, but they need them to stay side by side because that slows them down just a little bit and just enough for Joshua Chin, Andrew Aiken, and Andrew Wood to continue to kind of close in this gap. They are so close through those corners. But yeah, it looks like... Looks like that, yeah, that three, uh, Joshua Chin and Andrew would have caught up now. They're, they're definitely in the thick of this fight. But it, it's really a decision of how, how patient are they going to be with their decision making. Are they going to go for it? Are they going to push him out? Are they, what are they going to do here? Is the real question. It's going to be a big snaking line across the track. Simmons just can't pull ahead. Ethan Higgins got him on the corners. Uh, while Simmons has the run of the straights, he needs these straights to be longer because Ethan Higgins can just capitalize barely in the corners, just enough to keep him behind. And that is really hurting Logan Simmons right now because he's using more and more of his fuel. Andrew Aiken goes high. Josh Chin follows. Andrew Wood follows. They're following Aiken because if they try to follow Ethan Egan on the bottom, he's just going to, they're just going to lose out even more. They're still side by side. I mean, they've been side by side for like, what, 10 laps now? Straight? Yeah, I lost count of the laps that have been side by side. I just sort of thought they'd be going like this from the beginning. It's been so long. He is not letting up. Logan is going to go for this move, and Andrew Aitken is going to help him on that. He's sort of in between the two of them, sort of trying to provide both of them with the draft and see who can come out of it together. And remember, wonder what's going on with that field further in the back. Well, they're pretty much single filed out right now, too. There's nothing special really going on uh, deep in the field. This is the big battle right now on the track as Simmons is finally forced to yield for now. But here he comes. So round two about to get on the way. He's looking to the outside again. And this time, the side-by-side -side racing is very short-lived. I'm sure he's really wanting Andrew Joshua and Andrew... Oh, the other Andrew, Andrew Aitken and Andrew Wood and Joshua Chin to also lock in behind him, get a bit closer and push him into that position because Ethan seems to be holding this position. He's defending really well against Logan, but really holding that, that bottom line really, really well. So Logan Simmons still trying the outside line he needs some help up there if he's going to make it work he just can't get it done all on his own andrew aiken is looks like he's elected to stay to the bottom he's not wanting to go up there and help simmons for now because he's trying to get them side by side so he can close in and maybe sweep in take a three wide go for the lead you just never know do you i mean the the lap times for these are so similar as well and let me kind of show you what i mean here well what mark this time by the line so Ethan Egan's last lap, a 25-401, a 3.73 for Simmons, a 3.62 for Aiken, a 3.90 for Chin, a 2.34 for Wood. That just shows how similar these lap times are. They're only differing by a few hundreds apiece. They are absolutely evenly matched, each one of these drivers in the field. Yeah, it's, it's, it's completely evenly matched. I'm looking back at Robert Grosso, though, doing a two-tenths slower a lap which is going to be hurting him. I wonder what he's, his mindset is right now, is that that second pack is going to catch him, what he's going to do to maybe just hold a line, get pushed, or, or yeah, just sort of sit there. wonder if we can get Lucas to, to, to comment on that. You know, perhaps uh, in the future, hopefully we can give uh, Robert a talk of our own uh, here, if, uh, if worse comes to worse. Right now, though, the pressure is up front on Ethan Egan. He's no doubt feeling it right now as he is struggling to hold Logan Simmons at bay. Simmons is actually pulling ahead by just a little bit on the entry to turn three. And Ethan Egan is able to use the trioval to his advantage and get the continue to keep Simmons behind him. But if, I can almost guarantee you if this is a track like Dover where the lines were where there wasn't a little curve in the middle, it, it would be very, very different. And Simmons no doubt would not 
be able to hold on a second for too long. He would have been well past Ethan Aiken at this point. Oh yeah, Dover's one of the one of the few oval tracks I own, and that thing shreds your tires like crazy, especially on that high line. He's def he's gonna be looking for it. It looks like Joshua Chen is is going with that high line, trying to help him. As they are still side by side, they're getting very close in the turns. Logan Simmons seems to be getting a bit uh, a bit unstable through the corners as he nearly has the move done now. Just through the, through the end of those corners, Ethan seems to get that position back. But across the line, he comes straight back at him. This is a incredible racing. One of the things that I want to note as well is this has been uh, by far one of the longest green flag runs uh, we've seen yet today. Uh, we're approaching 40 laps now since their last pit stop. So this then pegs another question. When do you come into pit? They cannot make it to the end on fuel on their current stops. But if they were all to pit on this lap, they would be able to make it to the end on fuel just barely in clean air. So it is a one stopper from here to the end. That much is 100% guaranteed. The only question is going to be, how long is it before that pit opens up? But look at Simmons. He's actually trying to go by. He might take the lead here away from Ethan Egan. He's just ahead through three, ahead through four. Egan just barely pulls ahead of the front stretch, but Simmons is definitely closing in. Yeah, Simmons is closing in. He just needs that help from the, from the three behind him. As I said before, he's just not getting it through those corners. Just in the, the places where he gets just that little bit ahead, he needs them to drop him behind, and they just seem to choose Ethan Egan over him. But uh, yeah, that, that question is, we're nearly 50 laps to go here. Um, that that time has just flown by. It certainly has, and you know we were talking. Some drivers were talking about the cool conditions as well on the track. Well, may as well update you on that. It's 77 degrees on the track right now. Only 65 in the air. That is cold for a racetrack that is sitting in the middle of Nevada. Well, while this battle continues to rage on, how about we take a look from Andrew Aiken as he watches this battle for the lead rage on just in front of him as they approach lap traffic.
45 laps left to go here in the penultimate round in the 2020 Classic IndyCar Series season. Only 14 cars right now are sitting on the racetrack as of right now. Uh, the other drivers have since DNF from the race due to some spectacular accidents. You're watching the battle for the race lead. Logan Simmons trying to get around Ethan Agin. He's been trying this ever since the restart some 50 laps ago. Has never been able to do it. Once again, I'm Nolan Rimple. I have Daniel Harris uh, right beside me in the commentary box today. What a thrilling race this has been so far. We are now approaching the tail end of these fuel runs. If you're running in clean air, you're going to be needing to pit within the next three or four laps here or so. So pit, pit stop window is about to open, and then from there, it'll be a straight dash at the end. Crunch time is certainly here. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what they're thinking. They could. Maybe, I wonder if maybe they're thinking they lowball the fuel, jump in behind someone, and then go for it at the end. Because we know that Logan Simmons, because he was running side by side with Ethan Egan for that long, he would have been using a lot more fuel as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how the fuel loads are and, and if that makes a difference. Because we said it earlier, we, we do not want a heavy car here. You want you want a uh, a light car as light as possible. So it'll be interesting to see what what fuel loads they take. This will be the first round of green fly pit stops, too, that are at least scheduled. Uh, all other pit stop runs have been taken under the yellow flags, and those are just kind of shaking things up as well. For example, Joshua Chin fell back to fourth after missing a pit stop run, or after his missing his pit box on the last caution, has not been able to get back up to the lead since. Uh, Joshua Chin, of course, needs to finish well here today in order to keep himself in podium contention. Another driver that needs to finish off well is, of course, Robert Grosher who uh, is having to take a 20-point penalty uh, after today as well. There's one card that was just on the apron. Now it was, still is on the apron. It's Niall McBride, who just came down for a, uh, for a stop and is now out of the pits. That appears to be a scheduled stop. He's coming back into the pits, though. Niall McBride taking a pit stop two laps in a row. So McBride just shot himself in the foot here. And it would appear that the 41 machine... Might have forgotten a very crucial aspect. Maybe underfueled the car just a bit too much. I realized he was not going to make it to the end. Yeah, um, if if you remember before, Niall McBride actually uh, remember he dropped down to the apron. He did he hit the wall or, or something? He, and he dropped That's down true. to the apron and had repairs. So he's still uh, nine laps behind, I believe. Two, sorry, I'm not actually too sure. Ten but laps. He's def Ten, 10 laps, sorry, yeah, 10 laps behind. So yeah, he's not really in contention. I wonder if maybe he was just going out for some consolidation points or maybe just, just to see how it's going. But yeah, it's definitely any time, any any minute now, any lap, they're gonna jump into the pits. It'll be one goes, they all go. Uh, I don't think you can uh, fake a pit stop in green, can you? Well, here's the other thing to note as well. So these drivers do have to come down off of turn number three. That is by uh, uh, Class Candy Car Series regulations is that they must be coming in off the apron on turn number three when they're coming to pit. They can't just duck in off of turn four like you sometimes see in stock car racing. So that is going to be you know, pretty crucial in of itself. So I think that alone is going to make it so you can't really fake a pit stop, so to speak, unless you go to the apron and come back onto the track, which would be, I mean, that would, that would pretty much be hurting you and yourself right there. Andrew Wood checking up in the back for fifth place. He's coming down to the lane. Reflight pit stops are underway, and this will be the final pit stop run these drivers will have to take. They can make it to the end from here on fuel. Yeah, definitely gonna gonna wait and see. Maybe he's predicting that they'll they'll come in a couple laps and he'll gain those positions back. Interesting to see when Ethan go when Ethan goes because they're gonna want to those top three or uh, top four sorry as, as Joshua Chin looks like he's going in. Oh. So those, th those top three are gonna oh they are close bumper to bumper not something you really want to be doing in IndyCar but it's gonna be close as soon as Ethan goes in I think Logan and Andrew are gonna want to go in as well to so not lose any time when you're going at 350 k's an hour it's uh. <laughs> It's an interesting thing as Ethan looks like he's coming in. Ethan Egg is down in the lane as well. I see Tristan Howard with the salsa down there as well. Ooh, uh, he's ooh. just now in the lane. Marshall Stanley's in as well. I see Max Davies is also into the lane. So uh, a few drivers now coming down. Uh, Josh Chin's already in his pit stop. Robert Grosch is in there. Andrew Adair Saunders still in the pit road. Uh, Max Davies is in with front wing damage. What happened to Max Davies? Did he have a bit of an incident somewhere? He did! Max Davies just spun coming into the pit road! That That's a bit of an embarrassing one. Lost it on the apron all on his own where it's really flat coming in. 
What? How does he do that? Well, it's oh, very wow. flat. You lose a lot Must, of downforce. Yeah, no. Uh, we, we saw, uh, as we were watching Ethan uh, Egan come into the pits, we saw him actually get a little bit loose uh, coming in. He just sort of having to correct it. But yeah, that, that's that's what Lucas was saying earlier. These cars are oh, so, another, so loose. Another incident. Vessa's just spun coming into the pits as well. The 96 car is spun out. And that forced Hans Pitkin in a bit wide. He got loose. He also spun. And got oh, the penalty, penalty when he came down too late through the grass. So drama's here on the edge of the pit road. Yeah, we've got about 30 odd laps to go. 30, yeah, 30 laps, th around 30 laps to go. And uh, yeah, that's definitely going to hurt them. Um, I, w I wonder what's gone wrong there. It's just sort of the miscalculation of the speed needed because, yeah, these cars are just so loose uh, under braking. Right here, Ooh, right yeah, here. This will show it. There's the 96. Uh, he's checking them right now. He's slowing up at the pit road. Oh, yep. lost it all in the zone. Hits the inside <laughs> wall. And up front, you just saw yeah, Hans Picken see. duck over that white line again. Let's look actually up front to Hans Picken because he actually got a penalty for an unsafe pit entry when he uh, was forced to uh, go through the grass because he got loose himself and spun onto the racetrack. That was lucky to not be a caution there. All yeah. of this means Logan Simmons is right now in the race lead. Yeah, I was going to say, it looked like, yeah, he looked, it looked like he lost it because he had to avoid it, and it just shows how unstable these cars are at that lowest speed and how, how careful the drivers have to be. As we got Logan Simmons in the lead now, Ethan Aiken has dropped down to fifth. Robert Grosher just dropped another spot down to seventh place. Uh, Andrew Giash just getting around him. So Grosher's day continues to kind of, you know, go further and further south for him. 30 laps exactly to go as of right now. So not a lot of time left at all for these drivers to make something work. Uh, Josh Chin right now is running in the third position, though. So Chin they actually gained a spot as a result of all of this. Aikens in second. Simmons up in the lead. You got Andrew Wood down to the fourth position. And, uh, well, fifth place. And Ethan Aiken, nowhere to be found, as a matter of fact. Ethan Aiken way back in the field. So Ethan Aiken uh, misjudged something out of his pit stop in of himself. So Joshua Chin has a serious shot now to go for the lead. Ethan, Ethan Aiken, as we've shown in some of the shots, he's an independent driver. So he wouldn't have, I don't know if he would have had somebody controlling his fuel. Maybe he just miscalculated and overfueled his car and took too long of a pit stop. Because he was in the lead as we came to pit pits. That he was. No. Ethan Megan was in the lead. He had been leading ever since the restart. Yeah. Interesting to see as as we see Joshua Chin's looking to get in front of the in front of Andrew Aitken here, who's got that move done on under the pit stop as well. As he's going now, he's going he's looking for it. As he's got Andrew Wood trying to go on the inside of him as they look like they're gonna work together to go on that outside line. I should mention as well that this is crucial for Josh Chin to get around these two drivers. They're not battling in championship right now. Andrew Aiken is all the way down in the 11th position. Logan Simmons is down even further in the 28th position in points right now. So Josh Chin is not racing these guys for the championship, which is why he is going to be even more determined to get past this so he can score max points possible in his own battle with uh, Robert Grosher and Lucas Laville, the Vortec uh, Super Racing teammates. Yeah, I mean, just because you're not in championship contention does not mean a win is any less of a goal. He's going to want that win as much as any other driver. It's just going to be a battle of who wants it more. Andrew Wood going up high to help out Joshua Chin, which can give him a little bit of draft as well. So, uh, looks like we might have two lines and two different battles forming up here. They just passed by Hans Pitkin and... Um, a few laps ago in the number eight car, who's that black car kind of running just further in the background, the very dark blue machine. Pickett, of course, had a penalty for an unsafe pit entry after, uh, well, spinning loose on the entry and having to cut across the grass to get a pit road, so that has put him a lap down. They're about to lap Marshall Stanley as well, who's running ninth right now. Yeah, we haven't seen much of Marshall Stanley all race. He's just sort of been lurking around as they look like they're nearly going three wide here. But that's just a back marker as we've got Joshua Chin and Andrew Wood going on that outside line trying to get that move done. As it looks like... Who's that behind? Is that Giash? Is that one of the back markers sitting in behind that pack? 
That would be one of the cars for the bat. Let's watch the Stanley Hans picking and just sitting in the wings right now. And there's not a whole lot that these two drivers can do. I am 100% certain that these lead lap drivers would not be, you know, in. They, they wouldn't be the happiest cameras if they saw these drivers that are laps down trying to unlap themselves, especially Joshua Chin who is getting really close to Andrew Aiken. And, of course, you know, when you have Chin fighting for a championship, this is, you would definitely not want to be seeing a lap car trying to race him as well. Stefan Rossman is on the outside right now. He's slowing up to let this field through as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely not something you want to see as a driver back markers. <laughs> Being a road racer back I do not have fond memories of, of back markers. That's even worse than Oval because I don't get that blue flag. But it looks like they're staying back. But I mean, they could also be happy about it because those lap cars, is if they just stay behind, that helps them get that, that little bit of extra speed, that little bit of extra draft to go a bit faster and get a bit further away from uh, Giyash and Robert Grosha behind. It looks like they're having a little bit of a battle. Oh my goodness, and Joshua Chin nearly banging wheels that time by with Andrew Aiken through the triangle as they cross the start finish line, so it's certainly getting close. And the one thing Joshua Chin does not need right now is for him to DNF, because I'm pretty sure if he DNFs right now, he is out of the championship fights. And that is not at all what he wants to have happen. He's trying to go back to back wins come to mind. He had a dominant win at Watkins Glen uh, just a few weeks ago. He's trying to get another one here at Las Vegas. Won't be as dominant. But it will certainly be close at this rate. Less than 20 laps to go now. Logan Simmons continues to lead. Unless Andre can make something work, Simmons might actually have this race won. Looks like uh, Robert Grosha and Andrea Giash are really going for that sixth position. Yeah, as they're, they're just side by side going for it. They, they really need to tuck in between one another. We've got about 20, uh, yeah, about 15, 17 laps to go. I'd say. Despite us being on the closing stages of the race, there is still live time and available at racebot.tv forward slash CIS. That link you see on the bottom right of your screen. So racebot.tv forward slash CIS for live timing on all your favorite drivers, or at least that which ones are left, that is. Joshua Chin still trying to find a way around Andrew Aiken. We're keeping eyes on both battles right now. You got Grosh trying to get around Josh behind. You have this big battle for the lead as well. And that's been going on ever since the restart and even through the pit cycles. Logan Simmons has found his way on top as a result of the pit cycles. And it's just not, this is not looking pretty for Joshua Chan, who's trying to get up there. My goodness me, Andrew Aiken, that's not where you want to be, my friend. I would not want to be doing that, especially this lane. That would have maybe scared Joshua Chen as well to see him just touch that wheel on the apron and get a bit loose. But they're, uh, they've dropped single file again. I wonder if they're just preparing a slingshot or something, but it looks like we might have a photo finish here. Definitely going to be close. There's high potential for a photo finisher in this one if Andre can, can make the look for the move. And uh, looks like he's trying to he's trying to get up this so he can go for the lead himself uh, in the 27 machine. Um, there he goes, around the outside, trying to go for a four. The lead doesn't quite work for him. Can't get there uh, through the other corners. Let's take a look back, if we may, at the battle between Grosher and Giyash, because I've been watching them. They've always been banging wheels for the past four laps now. Both drivers are very impatient. Look at how close they're getting to turn four. This has been the story for four laps now. Grosher's pinning them down there, trying to get the side trap. He doesn't have anybody to help him on the top side, so Grosher's is trying to do whatever he can to find his way up there. I think this is the stressfulness that Grosher is feeling right now. I'd be feeling stressed too if I was in this position and fighting like this. Yeah, uh, Ro Robert needs <laughs> any position he can get at this point. It doesn't look like he's going to catch Ethan Egan. Um, if, if they can work together, it's, it's a possibility, but if, as they're four and a half seconds behind, it does not look like they're going to catch him. Yeah, certainly not. This is just a battle between themselves at this point. So once again, keeping tabs on all the, well, the two battles right now on the racetrack. Looking back up front to this fight for the overall race lead. Chin looking high, trying to get around Andrew Aiken. I think Chin's got to wait until Aiken's side-by-side -side with uh, Simmons, or he's not going to be able to get the move done. Yeah, Chin, Chin's got to wait for Wood. Wood Wood's got to be right up behind him, and they've just got to go. They've just got to pick a, a pick at that top lane, and wait for uh, Andrew to go to the top, and just 
go. They're, they're, they're not gonna have... We've ten laps to go. We, they've not got time to, to mess around and, and, and decide. They've got to make that decision and just get on with it. It is very much crunch time as Andrew Aiken continues to try to find any way he can to try to get through. At this point, Josh Chin is going to be feeling a little bit desperate too if he's trying to go for another win here. Chin alternatively could try to play it safe. We're 10 laps to go now. Chin could also just try to play it safe and get whatever points he can. He's still going to get a significant amount more than Robert Grosher is. Even though Grosher is only four spots behind him, Grosher again, 20 point penalty for your second place points winner going into today. Yeah, that's definitely going to hurt him. That 20 points has is, is got to be in the back of his mind as well as, as, as this fight as he's just he just wants any position he can get at the moment. It's to, he's got to take any scraps he can get from this 6th position, 7th position. And that's why I think he's fighting so hard is that that 20 points is just going to be that big damper and he might just end up losing points from this race and then it's just going to be all down to Indy next month. Well, we heard uh, uh, Lucas Laville saying that it was going to pretty much be a dead heat as to who could finish highest at any between himself, Robert Grosher, and Joshua Chin. And the further this race goes in, the more and more it looks like that's going to be the case. We're now at less than 10 laps to go, obviously. Uh, you got Andrew Aiken, who's still running out there in front. You still got uh, Logan Simmons as well, still holding on to the race lead, very admirably, might I add. Joshua Chin is still looking... Uh, Race as well. He might be trying to find a way through, but he is seems to be dropping back a little bit as well. Further in the field, you still have Robert Grosher and Andrea Giash side by side as well. They've still been getting close and really tempting fate with each other. As look at how much both drivers are weaving across the track, how close they're getting in these corners, especially in three and four. I mean, this has certainly been a very bit of a nail biting battle between these two because they've also been side by side for longer than I can remember right now. Yeah, they've got to be careful. They bring out the caution, and that'll that'll benefit Joshua Chen completely. And it'll be a, a devastating for Robert Brosha if if they do make contact and DNF, especially after 203 laps. Uh, it'll be heartbreaking. And I wonder if Joshua Chen is just wondering about that pit stop that he made, and he overshot the the pit entry. I wonder if he's thinking maybe that cost him. Well, you got to remember as well that if Bember serves them right, they don't have green white checkers in the CIS. So if there's a yellow flag now, it would most likely end the race, period. They will not be going back green if there's another yellow here. So right now, a yellow flag is not at all what Joshua Chin wants. He wants this to go green so he can continue to maybe try to find a way up there. And this, uh, it, the only way it would help him is secure that he would be getting third place. But, I mean, it would still hurt knowing that he could not get the two spots in front of him. Four laps left to go now. The battle is on. The battle is definitely on, but it looks like it's just a battle between Logan Simmons and Andrew Aiken as Joshua Chin seems to have dropped back by quite a little bit here. As we come around, the laps are just, there's less and less of them to go, and Joshua Chin has really dropped back, and Andrew Wood as well. I, I, I'm not sure as to what's happened with uh, Andrew Wood. He dropped back quite a bit. As we see, there's, a, I think, a back marker helping Joshua Chin as they... As we see, Andrew Aitken go high now. He's gonna try and uh, try and get that little bit of speed. I think it's gonna be a battle between these two for that win. Two laps remaining in a 208 lap race. It has certainly been a thrilling one. We will not be hitting the two hour time limit on the race. We will be finishing this uh, on the laps. The only question is going to be, where does Aiken go to make the move? He has got to make it soon. He's trying to make the move. He's trying to dive it off the corner, trying to get whatever momentum he can get. But if he's going to get the good momentum, he has to do it here. White flag in the air. Who is going to take the win at Las Vegas? Aiken goes high. Simmons keeps it to the low side. Aiken's Aiken is going to as dive high as he can. So Andrew Aiken, can he get the move done? Logan Simmons. Still running the bottom. Aiken is closing, continuing to close. He cannot get to him, though. It is going to be Logan Simmons off the final corner. Logan Simmons wins it at Las Vegas. Andrew Aiken third. Chin goes to fourth. The battle is still on, though, between Robert Grosher and Andrew Giosch. They almost make a contact oh, on the final side corner. Giosch trying to pull up. Line. Drag racing. Who oh. got that position? <laughs> I think it was Robert Grosser by the smallest of margins. By, from the looks on the timings at 
on the on the timing sheet it was three oh. thousandths of a second. This is a and bit of crashed. contact. The crash past the start finish line. Robert Brosha just collided uh, with the spun out Ethan Agen. Logan Simmons, though, takes the race victory. My goodness, that was a thrilling end. But the official margin of victory, for those I wonder, between Guyash and Robert Brosher, three thousandths of a second. Yeah, three thousandths is, is that margin. They would have been side by side. I really want to see that replay to see what that looks like because that was so close between those two. As Logan Simmons is just loving this win. He drove a good drive today, I'm not going to lie. He he drove very well, he defended very well against Andrew Aitken to, uh, to pull off this win. I think it was well deserved. Well, with the race completely finished up now, why don't we go ahead and take a look at your post-race results. Uh, it's going to be Logan Simmons to take the victory today. Andrew Aiken over there in second position. Chin uh, takes out the podium positions. Andrew Wood in fourth. Ethan Aiken fifth. Robert Brosher sixth. Andrea Gash, uh, Giash in seventh place. Trisha Hauser in eighth. Rounding out the cars that are lapped down. Now you got Marshall Stanley and Max Davies to finish out the top ten. Hans Pickenden in second place. Now McBride in twelfth place. Stefan Rossman in, third, in the thirteenth position. And now for all the cars that have DNF, you've got... Avesa Jilha Orlila in the 96 car in 14th. You got Mike uh, Gerlisha in 15th. Todd Novosad in 16th. Johnny Garrett 17th. Yoni Kayan in 18th. Art McHugh in 19th. Adam Shipstone 20th. Android Air Saunders 21st. Dave Lodel 22nd. Josh Baird 23rd. Martin June 24th. Caleb Weekly 25th. Jamie Wilson 26th. And an unfortunate Lucas Laville finishing exactly where he started in the 27th place. A very, very intense race indeed in this one. My, my goodness. W what what a run. I mean, just what an absolutely fantastic race. That was, that was an incredible race to watch. We went green for the majority of that. Whoa, for the whole, what, like 100 laps at the end of that race, was it? Well, certainly around there. That was the longest green flag run we had all race. After that uh, massive wreck over in turn two, uh, we definitely didn't. Uh, we definitely didn't have any cautions after that. Let's take a look at this replay between Robert Grosser and his uh, good old racing buddy over there, uh, Andrea Giash. This is the last lap of the race. The official margin of victory: three thousandths of a second. Grosser's on the outside. Giash is on the inside. Look at how close they are through turns three and four, almost making contact there. And then <laughs> oh, and the again. They almost bang those again. Look at how close this is at the line. Oh. You think that Giyash might have won that out, but yeah, no, Grosser I... just barely got it. Yeah, no, that definitely looks like uh, Giyash got it from the initial looking at it. But yeah, it, it, the official timing say it that, that Grosser won it. So, or one out of those two. So, uh, yeah. My goodness. An absolutely thrilling race indeed. I mean, that is, I think that's got to be one of the best races we've had all season. This is for, uh, for sure. Definitely one of the best oval races we've had all season. We still have one to go yet, too. We got a the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, which is going to be coming up uh, real soon on November 8th as well. So, uh, no doubt a lot of drivers cannot wait for that. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely be a great race. Indianapolis always provides a good race, so it will be definitely one to watch next month. November 8th is the date for that one. November 8th for a 200 lap race around the fearsome 2.5 mile rectangle. Well, with this in mind, I think it is about time to give a chat to your overall race winner, Logan Simmons. Congratulations on holding on to victory and, well, a very, or not necessarily commanded, but definitely a close victory at that for you. You must be feeling uh, really, really good after that one. Oh, yeah. It's uh, been about two years in the making on this one. It's incredible to win this win in this league. Let's talk about that final pit stop because that really is what won you the race. Ethan Egan uh, uh, kind of almost had a botched pit stop of his own and that allowed you to inherit the race lead. And from there, you let, I believe, every lap uh, to the checkered flag at that point uh, just ahead of, uh, I believe it was Andrew Aiken uh, right behind you. So what was your strategy through the pit stops? Because obviously we had a lot of them under yellow. That final one, though, under the, under the green flag conditions, uh, what was the strategy for that final stop? 
the strategy was to go as long as possible, come in, take as little bit of fuel as possible, and try to get out ahead of everybody else. And it worked. It almost didn't. The race off pit road was really, <laughs> I was worried about that with that narrow pit lane exit. Well, you did make it work. You came away with the win by just over a tenth of a second on Andrew Aiken. Uh, the next race in the season and the season finale at that is going to be the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Another uh, track uh, to certainly round things out. And it's going to be a close one at that, no doubt. What are your strategies going to be going in for that final race at the 2.5 mile rectangle? Strategy is going to be just to try to build the setup to get the most out of it whether it's hot cold in between and go out there and win another one of these races because this feels great but we got to keep it going and well hopefully you can keep it going indeed before we let you go here logan anybody that you uh anybody that you'd like to shout out for today yes my whole team of iconic motorsports andrew adair saunders todd novasad caleb weekly josh baird and Vesa Yulialia. They we all worked this week to get this set up going and unfortunately they had some bad luck early on and I guess it's great that I was able to come out and take that bad luck and turn it into the positive for the team. So Logan Simmons waving the iconic motorsports flag. Congratulations on the win, Logan. Good luck in the season finale next month. Thank you. That was your race winner, uh, Logan Simmons. We are going to now bring in uh, the third place finisher of the day and definitely the driver who is uh, going to be all of a sudden the underdog going to Indianapolis, Joshua Chin with a third place finish here today. My goodness, is this ever going to help you with your championship battle? Yeah, uh, works out pretty nicely. Puts us at, uh, I think, 24, 23 back going the last round. Uh, more than easily overcomable. Um, overall, just a good solid day. Uh, aim to. Uh, I wasn't aiming for pole. That was an unexpected surprise. But once I had that, just tried to lead as many laps as I could. I wanted to secure the bonus points for most laps led, and got that out of the way. And just after that, I said, "I'll go to top five with Lucas out." So that that was the goal, and I think I accomplished it. You're right now sitting 23 points uh, behind Lucas Laville in the championship. You've just passed Robert Grosher, who's sitting uh, third place with 26 points uh, overall uh, himself. So a three-point gap separating you and Robert Grosher. We talked to Lucas Laville uh, after he had his own uh, issues earlier in the race today about how it was basically going to be a dead heat between you three uh, at Indianapolis and how uh, it was basically going to be whichever one of you finishes the highest. Uh, what's your thoughts on that deal? Uh, he's not wrong. It's all three of us are pretty close and with it being double points um you know if someone goes out there and just wins the race um i think they'll end up getting the title over everyone else so uh qualifying is going to be super important you get points there and just uh get as many points as we can in the race and finish as high as we can well apart from the obvious uh finishing as high as you possibly can uh any other strategies that you're going to be trying to utilize going into that season finale uh, obviously, we're going to try and get as many of our team cars up there and quick as we can. Um, today was a, a good shot in the arm for pace. Uh, I know the last few ovals had been a little bit of a struggle for the team. And today we were looking pretty bad until the last hour of pra practice and got it uh, right up there on pace. And Jamie was having a solid race before his wreck. Andrew had a good finish. Niall was going to have a good finish before uh, he got bit on the ankle by his puppy. And uh, he was running second when that happened. We were kind of wondering what had happened to Mr. McBride. I guess, well, now we know. Uh, uh, dogs obviously can be, uh, it's an unusual factor in sim racing, but I mean, sometimes I guess you know, anything can happen in this sport. It really can. Uh, before we let you go here, anybody uh, that you'd like to thank today? Uh, everyone, Team Talent, Team Chimera. Um, big shout out to Jamie, Niall, and Andrew, all uh, put in good work, and we had a fast car as a result. And uh, Craig Setup Shop and Wagon Sim Shop for all their support. And thank you, Mr. Chin, for taking the time to join us once again today. Good luck in the season finale next month. Thank you, guys.
That was your third place finner, Joshua Chin. And now, well, how about we bring in the third place driver, not in the race, but certainly in the championship standings, Robert Grosher, joining us up here in the booth. Robert, a bit of an up and down race for you, for sure. You ended up finishing sixth place, just barely beating out Andrea Giash. What are your thoughts on how this race went for you and your team? I, I really have mixed feelings, to be very honest with you. <clears throat> I was, um, at some point in the race, I was expecting to be, be a bit more competitive, to be able to stay in the lead group. Didn't happen. Ob obviously, I was also feeling very sad for uh, what happened to Lucas. Haven't seen it yet, but his race ended uh, way too early. And um, so, yeah, I mean, with the drop weeks, I didn't gain too many points. Um, yeah, as, but entirely happy, I would say. I mean, the, 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 the fight in the end, that was awesome, and having the upper hand, that was great. Um, but I wish it was for P4 or something like that, rather than for P6. Well, uh, definitely a good run for uh, for you so far. You still managed to hang on to third place despite the penalty uh, that you had to take of 20 points. Uh, so it's looking like it's going to be a very, very tight battle going to Indianapolis. And I mentioned at the top of the broadcast today uh, that this has definitely been one of the most dramatic seasons uh, in your series history. I mean, just when we think it's over it's popped right back up again and everything's been blown wide open. I mean, this has certainly been the case uh, at this race, as a matter of fact. It's going to be a heads of battle between uh, you, Joshua Chin, and Lucas Laville going into Indianapolis. Uh, what's the strategy going to be going into next month? Actually, there is not much strategy plays going on right... Uh, yeah, uh, or strategy games going on right now because uh, with the double points, every single position matters. There is... We really have to be at the top of, of the field. We have to fight for the win. Uh, I mean, Lucas and myself. And other than that, we can say goodbye to the championship. I mean, Josh would be a very deserving uh, winner for sure, but still, uh, we try to save it for Vortex. And it has, of course, been a very, very uh, a good season for you guys all around as well. You're still running 1-3 in the championship standings, so no doubt uh, we are wishing you the best of luck going into Indianapolis. Before we let you go, uh, any final words? Uh, who helps you to be fast in your machine? Yeah, first of all, our season sponsor, Virtual Race Car Engineer. Then, of course, uh, Lucas and me, we were promoting... Uh, I was promoting the breast cancer awareness for this race and uh, Lucas the mental health uh, day 2020. So that's uh, pretty much uh, the thing. And of course, our other season sponsors, New Centric Solution, Edifice Inc., Open Wheels, and uh, the IndyCar Ministry. Thanks for the ongoing. And thank you, Robert, for taking the time to join us here today. Best of luck going into Indy. going to continue to move things down the order looks like we've only got one more driver and it's uh one that we've already talked to uh today as a matter of fact he's given his opinions a couple times lucas laville joins us once again in the commentary booth now lucas well you've no doubt seen the points 26 separate yourself joshua chin and robert grocer so it looks like your uh, prediction of a heads-up battle going into indy is well that's going to be the case yes it will it will and um they already stressed out uh, qualifying is going to be important because the top nine will get points for that. Nine points for P1 and minus ones for each for uh, for the fast nine. So that's going to be important to get some uh, some good points there. And then uh, with the double points, you never know. And um, with the way the field is, uh, we just saw Logan having a very dominant finish. That wasn't really expected for us. So uh, it's going to be a very very tight battle to get to the win at Indy so yeah we shall see and that's gonna be a very exciting race to prepare and hopefully a very good show for you guys to watch Robert uh, just mentioned that there's not going to be a whole lot of extra strategy game going into Indianapolis uh, due to the fact of it being double points and it basically being uh, a winner-takes-all situation with this being, of course, one of the most dramatic and tight championship battles uh, we've ever seen in this series. What's your thoughts on that whole uh, deal uh, coming into Indianapolis? Same idea, pretty much. Uh, that's what we, we said all year. Uh, I mean, we work together for... Every, pretty much every race to ensure that the team is always first but now uh, uh, it's, uh, it's each driver on his own pretty much for the race 
for qualifying we still want to put the, the maximum cars in the top uh, the top nine and still be together because we're better as a group but uh, yeah in the last 10 laps pretty much like last year it's uh, every man for himself and uh, for once I will hope I can keep him away from uh, from the title well, best of luck in the championship fight with both uh, Robert Grosher and Joshua Chin for yourself. Before we let you go as well, anybody else that you'd like to thank today? <laughs> well, big big shout out to Robert for uh, the set and Michele, Michele Costantini who helped build the set uh, in 2017. That was a very good baseline for us. Uh, so thanks to, to the guys and the team. Uh, shout out to you guys for having me during the race. It was very cool to uh, to have some uh, driver insight. I wish I could have done more, but uh, apart from being a great rival and the one that always took him out during races, I am also uh, proud to be Robert's crew chief when I'm not racing. So it was great to do that once again. Um, uh, and also a big shout out to to Robert for the paints. I was running a paint for a Ward Mental Day awareness as it was a big big thing for me the last few years. So that was very important for me to show that off today. And also a big shout out to series sponsor uh, Virtual Risk Car Engineer. And thank you again for joining us here, Lucas. It was a pleasure having you up in the booth with us during the race, however brief it may have been. And good luck next month on November the 8th going into Indianapolis. Cheers, guys. See you then. That looks like it will then about do it for driver interviews for today, Daniel. My goodness, well, what a race. I mean, the penultimate round of the championship, it's a heads-up grudge match now between teammates and between rivaling teams as well, as a matter of fact. I mean, I'm pretty sure... They're, both drivers are not going to be considered the fact that they're teammates when they're racing next month. Oh yeah, as soon as those, uh, as soon as, as soon as those uh, gloves come on and they get in those cars, all friendships go out the door, and it is all for one. But there is always that one rule: do not wreck your teammate. It's uh, that the, all the drivers spoke about how uh, how important qualifying is going to be, and I, I really think that that's true, and it's going to be a, a real. Uh, spectacle to see how uh, how close that qualifying will be and to see uh, how close that is and how it affects the race because uh, it's going to make all the difference. It's going to make all the difference indeed. Uh, whole day, of course, comes up first, and then, of course, bump day, if applicable. So it's going to be it's going to be very, very critical for a lot of teams to make sure that their setups are going to be perfect and their focus even, well, I guess even more perfect, if that's even a phrase. The elbows are out, and no driver has any room to show any mercy on the track. It's going to be a heads-up grudge match when the season finale comes around at Indianapolis Motor Speedway on November the 8th for what will no doubt be an absolutely thrilling conclusion to the 2020 Classic IndyCar Series campaign. I've been Ola Rampo bringing you action from flag to flag for tonight's race with Daniel Harris beside me in the commentary box and Hugo Louise downstairs in the producer's chair. From the team here at RacePod TV, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving to the Canadians.